Okay, so today it's we, we, we reach a point in the semester where we break a little bit from what I've been doing because we're going to transition into a completely new program. Uh, might not be new to all of you, but new to some of you. Um, we're, today we're moving from the Adobe Suite, which we've been Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator primarily working in. Today we're going to move over into AutoCAD, which is a whole different animal, so to speak. Um, some of you are familiar with it. That's great. Um, you'll breeze through the earlier exercises, but I think by the end of my AutoCAD lectures, you'll actually learn a few things. Um, so I've been, I personally have been using AutoCAD since 1997. So that's 20 plus years of AutoCAD for me. I just put that together right now. <laughs> so um, it's changed a lot since I first learned. There, there used to be a lot more command line, and you just had to like memorize stuff. And now there's a lot of buttons, which is good for you if you're just starting out. Uh, but there's a lot in AutoCAD. I think if you were to ask a, a practicing architect the most common software that's used or that they interact with, it's probably AutoCAD. Um, we're shifting away from AutoCAD a little bit into Revit, um, but that's not, that's not to say that the whole industry has gone that way. There's a lot of people, especially smaller offices, that are going to stay in AutoCAD forever. Um, so it's, it's definitely, in my opinion, worth something to learn it. I think most firms that you're going to work for have an expectation that you're going to know it. Um, learning AutoCAD is not something that you're going to be able to do in two or three weeks. Doesn't work. It takes a lot of practice to get really efficient and, and, and good at it. If you've taken Rhino or if you worked at all in Rhino, the good news for you is it's almost the same. And almost everything works the same way. Most of the commands are very close. So that makes your life easy. If you're proficient in AutoCAD and you move over to Rhino, that makes that easy. So it, uh, it, it's a good thing for those of you that have taken 136 or plan to take 136. Um, it did take some convincing to switch this class into teaching a little bit of AutoCAD. Um, what it ultimately came down to is giving you guys enough skills to be able to make some um, drawings to be able to laser cut. I'm not going to overemphasize laser cutting in this class. I talk a lot more about it in 136. But um, what I've tried to do is I've tried to say, what things do I think the AutoCAD class leaves out? And that's what I'm going to try to teach you. <laughs> um, so I'm not trying to give you the comprehensive overview of this is AutoCAD. In fact, I would highly recommend taking a 2D AutoCAD class, because a 2D AutoCAD class is about all you need to know. If you're going to go into 3D, you're going to use a different program. AutoCAD in 3D is nasty. So it's not worth it. Just skip that whole learning curve. Um, but if you, if you can, I would, I would highly encourage you to take a semester of AutoCAD. That will help greatly in your proficiency and just being able to draw. So today, I'm going to introduce AutoCAD. We're going to walk through some of the basics, and we're going to talk through kind of how AutoCAD is set up, et cetera. That also means that I'm transitioning away from the typical format of the class where I have the kind of the lecture with the slides in the beginning. We're going to go more straight into the program, and we'll work through the AutoCAD section which must, with much less of the, the lecture beforehand followed by the demo after. It's going to be a lot more uh, of the demo time. So be aware that because it's a lot more of the demo time, you might get behind. You might not be able to follow exactly what I'm doing all the way through. That's why the videos are recorded. They're there for you. Uh, you can view last semester. I talk about the same stuff over and over again. So um, if you miss something, we can go back. And obviously, I can help you through it uh, afterward as well. So um, we have on these school computers in this particular image for now, uh, we have two versions of AutoCAD. Actually, we have three versions of AutoCAD. Um, you can choose to use either the 2017 or the 2016 version of AutoCAD. Sometimes if you double click on an AutoCAD file, it will open in one or the other, depending on which file associations are set up on the computers. Um, it makes no difference. They look almost identical. There's very little changes between 2016 and 2017 AutoCAD. Um, if you download one of the free trial student versions of AutoCAD, it's probably going to be the 2018 version. I haven't played around with the 2018 version yet, so I don't know what's changed in it. But we have 2017, therefore that's what we're going to use. Um, there is also an AutoCAD architectural version. We're going to stay away from the architectural version, even though 
technically we're in architecture class. We're going to stay away from the architectural version because we don't want to be working with things like walls and doors and windows and that kind of stuff. We're just going to draw as if we're drawing. And so I think that's a better way of learning AutoCAD is to actually just learn how to draw. So um, I went ahead and I opened up AutoCAD 2017. For each of you, when you open up AutoCAD 2017, you may get some different splash screens. It might not look exactly like mine looks because you're opening it for the first or second time. This computer, I've been opening it for a couple years on this image. So things change over time. Um, I'm going to start by creating a brand new document and then I'm going to walk you through kind of everything about AutoCAD, what the interface looks like, because this looks distinctly different than any of the Illustrator Adobe products that we've seen so far. So it's very different. So to create a new AutoCAD file, up in the very upper left corner, there's kind of a blank page looking thing. I'm going to click on that button and it's going to ask me to select a template. And the, the point where this template comes in is if you're in a, in a firm and you're working on drawings, sometimes there's a template that you're going to base certain drawings on. Maybe it's a title block or whatever that you're going to bring in as part of your drawings, uh, as part of your sheet set or, or whatever. In this class, we don't have any of that kind of stuff set up. So we're just going to go with the basic AutoCAD, the ACAD template, and you'll go ahead and say open. That's what's selected by default. So it shouldn't be, shouldn't be too much of a problem. So now I want to start by kind of walking you through what's going on in this interface. Hopefully your AutoCAD looks very, very similar to what my AutoCAD looks like. I'm trying to look around at a few of the screens. Looks like some of you don't have this properties. Looks more like this. I'm just trying to make sure I match up with what you're seeing. Does this look like your screen? OK. So let me walk through what's happening in AutoCAD uh, to start. So you'll notice at the top of the screen where we normally have the file edit menus, those kinds of things, those are gone completely in AutoCAD. That's something that AutoCAD decided to, to do. We do have a few menus that are available to us. If you click on the A here, it will bring down um, some of the, the same kinds of things that are available in the file menu, like printing and that sort of thing. Very rarely will we actually go into any of these, but I'm at least pointing out that they're there. We already clicked on the new document. That would be how you create a new document. Open one is the open folder save and save as, and finally plot. Those are kind of the only file operations that you're really doing in AutoCAD. The next thing that you may or may not see, some of you may see this, some of you may not, is something called a workspace. Mine says drafting and annotation. That's probably what the default is. If you're not seeing it, it's hidden because it's not turned on. So at the very end of this row, there's a little downward facing arrow and workspace is not checked, therefore you're not seeing it. It doesn't really matter, but it's a way of unifying all of us have the exact same screen. Um, let me switch. I'm just switching back into it. Hopefully it'll match. This is just a, a default window setup. It's kind of like when we switched from essentials in the Adobe suite to typography. Same kind of deal. OK, so moving down. Below those, those initial buttons at the very top, we have several different little panels that are open. The home panel here is the primary panel that's going to be open at the top of the AutoCAD window for most of what we're doing. As we go across here, like for example, if you click on Insert, we get a new panel that shows up, or ribbon, depending on what the terminology is that you want to use. Annotate gives us a different ribbon, etc. For our purposes in this class, almost everything is going to be done from that home panel uh, or home ribbon. So you don't really have to worry about switching them, but I like to point out that they're available should you want to switch them or should you need to switch them. The home panel is broken up into several categories. The first category here is draw, lines, polylines, circles, arcs. Those are the most common, according to AutoCAD, that you're going to be drawing, followed by the smaller buttons for rectangle, ellipse, and hatch. There are other tools that are available in the downward facing draw right in here. Um, there are, I think there are splines. There's a variety of other things that are available to you. Um, so just be aware that they're, they're there should you need a few extra tools. Though most common things, lines, polylines, are probably what you're going to be working with. So that's that first little category here, the draw category. The next category over is the modify category. So this means I want to change something that's existing. 
I want to move it, I want to rotate it, I want to trim it, copy it, mirror it, etc. So the most common tools are available first. Again, we've got a downward facing drawer that has some of the lesser used materials should we, or tools should we need to access any of those. We move over into the annotation category. This is kind of a whole nother deal. We're not going to touch on annotation at all in this class uh, because it's just too much for the amount of time that I have to teach you AutoCAD. We move over. The next panel here is layers. These are actually very important in AutoCAD. They work a little bit different than layers do in the Adobe suite. Uh, layers don't have to do with which object is on top of which other object in AutoCAD. Layers in AutoCAD have to do with show me these lines and don't show me these lines. Or show me this and don't show me that. They also have special properties like make all the lines on this layer a certain thickness. Make all the lines on this layer not print when I go to print. Those kinds of specialty uh, scenarios. We'll talk a lot more about layers as we go forward. For today's purposes, we're not going to even worry about layers, but I like to introduce all of this stuff as we go along. Blocks is the next category. We're not going to deal with blocks until later on in the semester. Properties, this, this category here has to do with line weights, colors, styles. Is it a dashed line, a hidden line, etc.? cetera? Um, there's also a big button for match properties. So if you have a line that you like, you can match a new line to be the same as that line, which can be useful. Um, the last four here, groups, utilities, clipboard, and view, are kind of more just extra tools for you. I won't spend too much time talking about them. OK, so we move down into the primary workspace here, which on your screen probably has a gridded background. It's a little hard to see on the projector because of the glare. Uh, there is a green line and a red line. And in the very corner, you probably see an x and a y axis. If you remember way back to when you were in that like first algebra class, we had that x and y axis, and you had to plot points on it. You guys remember this? You had to do an equation that had a slope on it, maybe a little bit vaguely. The good news is you don't have to do any of that in here. However, having that x and y axis means that AutoCAD is based on a coordinate system. So we can use those coordinates in space to help us determine what's being drawn. And I'm going to talk about that at length today as we go forward. The workspace in AutoCAD is a black background. You're going to draw white lines on the black background. That was decided in AutoCAD a long time ago because people spend hours and hours and hours staring at AutoCAD drawings. And so if you're sitting there staring at them, if, you, if you're looking at white lines on a black backdrop, it's much easier on your eyes than if you're looking at black lines on a white backdrop. So because of that, black and white in AutoCAD are reversed. When you go to print them, all of your white lines will turn black. You don't have to do anything. It's just automatic. So it just has to do with how you're viewing the lines. Uh, it makes seeing them on the projector really easy when I, when I draw them, because you'll see the white lines really, really clearly. Uh, the grid, you don't see so much. As we move down here, there's this white box at the bottom of the page. And it says inside the box, it says type a command. So this is something that's built into AutoCAD. It's built into a lot of drawing programs. Rhino, it's built into Rhino. Same, same thing here. And that is that we can, instead of picking a button to do a particular command, instead of uh, picking the button, for example, for line, I could also just type line. And when I type line into that command line, it's the same thing as picking the button. There's actually shortcuts for a lot of these. So you don't have to type all of line. But anyway, this command line greatly improves and uh, increases efficiency. So the more proficient you are in AutoCAD, the less you ever pick buttons. You just type as you go. And by doing that, your speed improves quite a lot. And it takes a lot of practice. You have to learn what the commands are um, to be able to do it. That's why AutoCAD takes a while to learn or to become really fast at working it because you have to learn those command lines. Those of you that have taken the Rhino class, I know there's a couple of you, um, you, you've started working with the command line and you realize over time that, oh yeah, it is a lot faster to just type the command. Um, so when I'm working for you guys, most of the time I'm going to pick the buttons so that you can see me click on the buttons. But sometimes I will type commands, in which case I'll tell you this is what I'm typing. Okay, So 
when in doubt, look down at that command line because it will also prompt you. So for example, I have the line command active. The command line here says specify first point. So it tells me what to do next. So it's not a bad idea to keep one of your eyes looking down at that command line as you're drawing because it's going to help you with what's the next step. How do I move, proceed with this? So we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go forward. At the bottom of the page, we have several tabs. One is called Model. That's what we're going to be drawing in. The next two are called Layout 1 and Layout 2. For today, we're going to completely ignore Layout 1 and Layout 2. However, uh, in another week or so, we'll start talking about what those tabs mean. So we want to make sure we're in Model. You'll know. If I click on Layout 1, for example, um, oops, sorry, I'm in the line command. It looks totally different. So you'll know if you're in the wrong, the wrong uh, view here. We just want to make sure we're in model. That's good. As we come across the bottom of the page here, there's also a bunch of tools that are listed down here in the bottom corner. Okay, And I know it takes a while just to get through the interface of AutoCAD. Um, these are designed to help you with a variety of, of drawing commands. And I'll, I'll talk you through what, they, what all of them mean as I use them. But the first thing that we need to do today is I need to make sure something called dynamic input, uh, the button is number one showing for you, and number two, that we're going to turn it off because it's going to help me explain how the coordinate system in AutoCAD works. So I want you to click in the very corner. There's three lines. And when you click on that, it brings up this menu. And in this menu, there's an option for dynamic input. It's like the fifth one down. And I want to make sure that that one is checked. A lot of times it's unchecked by default for, for new, new AutoCADs. So it's checked. That's the way I want it. Then I'm going to come down to this bottom, and I'm going to click on this icon right here. It's a plus sign with a rectangle, a filled in blue rectangle next to it. If you hover over it, it'll say dynamic input. And I'm going to click on it so that it turns white instead of blue. That essentially turns off dynamic input. We'll end up turning it back on later on, but it makes it a lot easier for me to explain what I'm drawing without that on for right now. OK, so now we're going to actually start some drawing in AutoCAD. What, we'll, what we will be creating today is on the back of your page, your little handout. It's a simple floor plan, not much to it. But this, for those of you that have never worked in AutoCAD, this will take you the whole, the whole class to do. For those of you that are very efficient and proficient in AutoCAD, this won't take very long. Okay, So it's just the way of the world. So what we're going to do is we're going to start drawing. And I have, I've finished part, on part one, I've finished the step one, and I've turned off dynamic input. I'm going to go up to my polyline tool right here, and I'm going to click on it. I could also type P line into the command line. And I'm going to start right at where x and y meet. Now, if I were to try to just click on where x and y meet and start my line there, as I zoom in, I'd quickly find that, wait a minute, I'm not where x and y meet. If I said, OK, well, let me do it again. And this time, I'm going to be really, really careful. I'm going to make sure I'm right on where x and y meet. Yep, that's it right there. Well, as soon as I zoom in, once again, it's going to move off. So AutoCAD has an incredible level of, of accuracy when it comes to where points land. It actually has 16 decimal places of accuracy. Yeah? It should show up in your lower left corner. You have it in your lower left corner. Scrolling in and out with the scroll wheel zooms you in and out. OK? Good questions. So when I go to start this line, I want it to start exactly where x and y meet. Well, I know in math that the point where x and y meet, if I were to type in the coordinates for that, it would be 0, 0, because that's the origin. So I can actually, with the polyline tool selected, I can type in, into my command line, 0, 0. And you can see it right down here at the bottom. Specify start point, 0, 0. And I'll go ahead and hit Enter. Actually, you know what? I just realized I didn't set the units correctly first. So let me, let me, I'm going to hit Escape. Apologize. Go ahead and type units and hit Enter. 
and you should get the drawing units dialog box coming up. And we're going to change the length to architectural from decimal. So once again, and I'll say OK when I'm done. Units, I just type in units, and my length should be set into architectural. I apologize I didn't do that first. I, I, didn't, I don't even know if I mentioned it in here. Oh, yeah, first thing on step one. Uh, clearly, I can't read. So we type that units. There we go. Let me go back to the polyline tool, and I'm going to specify 0, comma, 0. If, if you're in the middle of a command and you want to like get out of it, just hit escape on the keyboard. And sometimes it takes hitting escape a couple times. And that'll back you out of any, any active command. So when, just as, as a side note, on, on the handouts that you get and on the, on the, the same exercise 117 that's, that's posted online, when in AutoCAD, or if you end up taking 136 in Rhino, whenever I refer to something that is typed in into the command line, the font on the handout is going to change. So you should see it should look a little bit more like a typewriter font versus the regular font. Same thing on the website, where the font changes whenever I type something in. So you should get that as a clue of, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be typing that, that value. OK? So let me jump back into AutoCAD. I'm going to hit Escape twice and, and start fresh so you guys see me do this fresh again. I'm going to go to the Polyline tool. And I'm going to type in 0, comma 0. And it shows up down here in my command line. And I'll hit Enter on the keyboard or Return on the keyboard. And now, no matter how much I zoom in on that x and y cross, the line is always going to start right there in the very center because it's at 0, comma 0. OK, so now I need to draw a line. And I want this line to go straight up the y-axis. And I want it to be 24 feet long. So if we were working in the same kind of coordinate system where I was specifying dimensions, in this particular case, I would be going 0 in the x. And I would be going 24 feet in the y, because I want it to be going up 24 feet in the y. So nothing in the x, 24 feet in the y, I can type in this next value. It would be 0, comma, 24. And I need to specify that this is in feet, not in inches. So to do that, I'm going to use the apostrophe on the keyboard. Inches is going to be the quotation mark. Feet is going to be the apostrophe. So I'll hit the apostrophe. It's right next to the Enter key on your keyboard. So your command line should say 0, comma, 24, apostrophe for feet. And when I hit Enter, it's going to draw a line that actually goes way up beyond my page at 24 feet. So this is one of the interesting things about AutoCAD, is we don't do any scaling when we draw. So you're never scaling any numbers down. You just draw full size. So if I have a wall that's 24 feet, I draw 24 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter one more time on the keyboard to finish the command. And you'll see that my command line turns blank. And I'd like to see all of my, my drawing. I'd like to be able to see everything that's on the page. And so to do that, I'm going to use the Zoom command. It's available under, uh, I believe, the View. Sorry, I never actually click the buttons for this. <laughs> uh, You know, truthfully, I have no idea where it is. So we're just going to type zoom. You can also just type Z for zoom. And I'll hit Enter. And it, it, down here at the command line, I have some options. I have zoom all, center, dynamic, extents, previous, scale, window, or object. So in this case, I just want to see everything. So I'm going to click on extents, or I could type E for extents. And when I do that, I'll see my whole 24-foot line. There it is right there. So once again, that was Zoom or Z, followed by Enter. And I chose Extents or E. 
and that gives me just my object. So now I need to continue on with my drawing. I'm going to start with that polyline tool again, and I want to start right at the end of this object. So this brings about another tool that's available to us in AutoCAD. It's called Object Snap. So sometimes, like in this case, I'd like to be able to start drawing right on the end of this line. And just like with point zero, 00, if I said, oh, well, I'm just going to start right on the end of that line, OK, I'm, I can't even get it that close. I'm there. I'm on the end of the line. As I went to zoom in, well, no, I'm not quite. So we want to make sure that we're right on the end of that line. And that's where something called object snap comes in. It means snap to a particular point on an object. It's available down here at the bottom. It looks like a rectangle with a green dot in one corner. You want to make sure that it's highlighted in blue, so it's blue rectangle with a green dot. But there's also a little triangle next to it. And if I click on that little downward pointing triangle, I'll get a list of what types of snaps are available to me. I want to make sure that endpoint is checked, midpoint is checked, center is checked. And personally, I like quadrant. I don't actually like intersection much. Um, we can leave extension on. And I really like perpendicular. Those are personal choices, so not something that you have to do. But we definitely want endpoint, midpoint, and center. Those three should be on. When I'm done, I'll click that downward arrow one more time. Oops. And that closes my O snaps. Yeah. I know, it's so hard from back there. It's, it's, a, it's a white or a blue square with a green circle filled in dot in the upper left corner. You see it OK now? OK, so it should be, we want it to be blue with that green dot. And we want to make sure that the little downward facing arrow We've turned on endpoint, midpoint, and center. OK. So now I can go back to my polyline tool. And as I, as I move to the end of this line, I will get, sorry, let me turn off for just a second. I'm going to turn off perpendicular so that I get the end. So I get a little square that jumps around. It's a green square as I move close to this object. I get a green square that goes around it. That means it's going to snap to the end of that line. So as I click, it's going to start right at that end. And if I were to zoom in on this point, as close as close as I could get, it would be right on top of that point. That's what we want. So now, with this coordinate system, I could continue on my way, and I could type the next coordinate. So I want to have a wall that's 12 feet long right here. Well, I'm going 12 feet in the x direction, but the point that I want is 24 feet up in the y direction. So it would be 12 feet, comma, 24 feet. And then I would go ahead and hit Enter. And it would draw that line. So the problem with this is that it takes a lot of math to figure out where all these coordinates are. You really have to think about, well, wait a minute, where are these points? Furthermore, all of these points are absolute coordinates, meaning they're relative to point zero, 0, or the origin. And so if I had some drawing, for example, way over here, and I was trying to draw the same thing, it would be pretty hard to figure out where, well, wait a minute, how far up am I? How far over am I? It's, it's too much math to try to figure out. So we have something else that's available to us. And those are called relative coordinates. So in this instance, if I were at this point, this is the last point I, I, uh, I was on, relative to that point, I want to go down 6 inches. I'm not going over in the x direction at all. So to specify relative to this last point that I clicked, I'm going to use the at sign, like the email sign, at. And then I'll say 0 in the x, negative six feet in the y. So it should say at zero comma negative six feet. And I'll go ahead and hit enter. So this coordinate is relative to the last point. So if I were continuing on here from that point, this is now the last point that I created, 
I would say I want to go over 12 feet, so it would be at 12 feet, comma, 0, because I'm not going anywhere in the y direction. So I'd say at 12 feet, comma, 0, and hit Enter. All of these values, by the way, are written out on your handout. So if, if you get a little lost, they're, they're all there. So then I would continue down. In this case, I would want to go at 0, comma, negative 12 feet, because I'm not going anything in the x direction and only negative 12 in the y direction. I'd hit Enter. And then I want to go back by 12 feet. So this would once again be at negative 12 feet, comma, 0. So nothing in the y direction, negative 12 in the x direction. Or I guess I should say at negative 12 in the x direction, nothing in the y direction. I can hit, hit Enter. I could switch back to the absolute coordinate here. If I did, I wouldn't put the at sign in. It would be just 0, comma, 12 feet. Oops. How about 12 feet, comma, 0? There we go. And then I can end by just snapping back to my point. When I'm done, I'll hit Enter one more time to end the command. And I've now drawn this particular shape. So I've used both absolute and relative coordinates. The truth is, most of the time in drawing, both methods are still a little bit challenging. There are special cases where using these coordinates are really, really useful. And you'll find that as we go forward, I'll give you some examples where this is a really useful thing to have. So I like to start by introducing that as a concept. Now we're going to turn back on that dynamic input button. Remember the plus with the little uh, filled in rectangle next to it? I'm going to turn back on that dynamic input, and now I'm going to draw this shape again. This time I'm not going to draw it starting at 0, 0. I'm going to draw it over here to the side. So I don't know where the coordinates are anymore. So my only option would be relative coordinates, so the at sign coordinates. Or now that I have dynamic input turned on, you see next to my cursor, I have a little bit of text, specify start point, and I have two text boxes. So if I were to type in 0, 0, I could still do that. But I could also just click a, click a start point. So I'll say that's my start point right there. Now notice, as I'm drawing, I get a measurement that's showing up. I get a degree measurement, and I get a length measurement. That's what this dynamic input does for me. So in this case, I want to make sure that it's perfectly straight. So I'm going to turn on another one of these tools down at the bottom. It's called ortho. It looks like a right angle sign. I'll click on that right angle sign, and it's going to restrict so that I can only draw a straight line at 0, 90, 180, and 270. So I'm stuck in those, those basic north, south, east, west coordinates. Or, um, so now at this point, you see that I have a value that's increasing on this side. I could obviously move my way up until I got to 24, and I could keep moving my mouse and try to get to exactly 24, which is hard. Or I could just type in 24 feet. So there's no coordinates necessary, just 24 followed by the apostrophe sign, and hit Enter. That then creates my first line. Now I can continue on and say this is now 12 feet. I can continue on and say this is 6 feet. I can continue on and say this is 12 feet. You can see where this is pretty easy. Where this gets a little tricky is when you start using the degree. So if you jump over into the other, um, the other text box. But you don't have to worry about that for right now. So I'll type 12 feet. I'll come over 12 feet. I'll go down 6 feet. And I'll end my shape right there. When I'm done, I'll hit Enter. And now I've just drawn that shape. So it took a lot less time because I had that dynamic input button turned on and I was able to just specify the lengths. So now that I've drawn this particular shape, I need to make this into some walls. Obviously, on the floor plan on the back, we have some walls. So I need to make this shape into a shape that has some walls. I'll delete my first shape. Uh, and this actually brings up a good point. Well, I'll save that for later. Let me just delete this first shape so that we're concentrating just on this shape. Here we go. And now 
I need to offset this so that I have a second set of these walls at a specific distance from the first set, or a second set of lines at a specific distance from the first set. I'm going to use the offset command, which is available under the modify tools. It's the last one on the lower right corner of the modify tools called offset. You could also type offset into the command line, either way. And when I click on that offset tool, if I look at my command line, it says specify offset distance. So the first thing it's asking me is how far away do I want this new set of lines? We're not going to worry about the technicalities of how thick walls actually are. We're going to do a generic six inches. So I'll go ahead and type six followed by the quotation mark for inches. And I'll hit enter. Now it's set at six inches. And it's asking me on the command line here to select object to offset. So I'm going to click on this particular object. When I click on that object, it's going to say specify point on side to offset. So do I want this line to offset to the outside, or do I want it to offset to the inside? In our case, I want it to offset to the inside, so I make sure that my cursor is on the inside of this shape, and I just click. It doesn't matter where on the inside, it just has to be on the inside. And I'll go ahead and click. So now I have two lines that are exactly six inches apart. If you drew this in multiple line segments, you may have to offset multiple times. I did this in this second one in, in one whole line segment, so the offset happened all at once. It doesn't matter. You can offset it using multiple uh, pieces as well. So now I have my lines here. It's time to start drawing the door at the top. And for those of you that are in 136, this looks really familiar, right? <laughs> yeah. This is the first thing that they do in Rhino. So it's, it's, it's the same, same concept. OK, so I need to draw the door at the very top here. So I'll start with just a line. I don't need a polyline because I'm not going to have a, a continuous. The difference between a line is just one point to one point, and then I'm done. The polyline is one point. Oops one point and then it continues on and is all one line afterward. So even with the line tool, if I continued on, let's say I kept drawing like this, each of the segments is a separate segment. The polyline just joins them together into one segment. So for our purposes right now, it doesn't matter whether I pick line or polyline because it's going to be one segment. And I'm going to draw this right at the very center of this wall. Previously, I turned on the center object snap. I asked you to do midpoint. So I'm going to, as I hover over the middle of this line, I'm going to get a triangle that says midpoint. That's the middle of this line. And I'll go from this midpoint up to that midpoint. When I'm done, I'll hit Enter on the keyboard. And I end up with one little line segment that's right at the middle of this wall. We've previously used offset, so I'm going to use that offset command again. It's available right here, or I could type offset. Offset, dis specify distance. In this case, the door is three feet wide, so I need half of that distance, which would be 18 inches. If you don't want to do the math in that, you could do uh, one foot six inches, if that makes life easier. Either way, I can type it in. So I could type 18 inches, or I could type one foot six inches with no spaces in between it. Either way would get me there. I'll hit Enter. It says select object to offset. I'll pick this line, and I'll move it over to that side. I'm going to repeat the command. I actually don't have to repeat the command. I just have to select the object again. And I'll go to that side. So I've offset this line that's right there in the center by 18 inches to one side and by 18 inches to the other side. When I'm done, I'll hit Enter on the keyboard. And I now have the two sides of my door there and there. So I'm going to go ahead and trim which basically means cut out the lines that go across there and there. 
So I'm going to use the trim command. It's available again under the modify tools, or you could type trim. I'll click on it, and it's going to ask me to select objects or select all. So I want to select my objects. I can click on this object and that object. I can draw a box. So if I click once in the upper left corner and click once in the lower right, I can draw a box to select it that way. Either way. I'll go ahead and hit Enter when I'm done. Now it says Trim. So all I have to do is click on the parts of the wall that I want to go away. So I want that part to go away. I want that part to go away. I want that part to go away. And I want that part to go away. I could alternatively draw through. And in this case, it would be from right to left to select both of those objects at the same time as I do the trim. Just another way of doing it. When I'm done, I'll go ahead and hit Enter. So that brings up a good point about selections in AutoCAD. There's two ways of selecting objects. If I wanted to select this object, actually there's three ways of selecting an object. If I wanted to select this little piece of the object, I could click on it. That would select it. I could click and completely, from, from the left, I could completely cover the object and click, and that would select this object. From the right, you notice that, that from the left it's a blue selection window. From the right it would be green. Anything this object touches, anything this selection touches would be selected. So here's an example. Let's say I wanted to select just this end. If I selected from the left to the right, I'm going to select just that end. If I selected from the right to the left, I'd select all of the walls with it. So there's a difference in the direction of the selections as well. And that'll become more intuitive as we go along. So I'm going to go ahead and select this line in the very middle. There it is. And I'll press the Delete key on the keyboard to get rid of it. You could also type in Erase. That would get rid of it, which I believe is this tool right there, the little pencil eraser. So now I have a door, but I need to draw the actual door. So this is a good opportunity for a rectangle. It's also a good opportunity for a relative coordinate. So I'll click on the Rectangle tool, and I'll snap to this corner of the door. Now the Rectangle command is saying specify other corner point. Well, this is pretty hard. I know what I want the thickness of the door to be, and I know that it's three feet long. So this is a perfect opportunity for those relative coordinates that I was talking about earlier. So I'll specify at, because it's relative, and you can see it in my, my cursor here, the at sign shows up. X first, so that would be 1.75 inches for the thickness of the door. If you make your door a little thicker, a little thinner, really doesn't matter. I'm never going to critique that part of what you're doing. Okay? So I'll say at 1.75, comma, and when I press the comma, notice that my my text moves into the next field. So I say at 1.75 comma, this would be negative 3 feet because it's going down by 3 feet. And I'll hit Enter, and it will draw the door for me. So that was a rectangle. I'll do the whole thing again. That's a rectangle starting at this point, And I'm going to say at. So relative to that point that I just clicked, 1.75 inches, comma, negative 3 feet for the distance of the door, and Enter. And I get that little door. Last thing I need is an arc to, to mark the swing on the door. Personally, I don't like to use the default arc. I'm going to click the downward arrow next to arc. And I'm going to choose the start, end, and direction arc, which is right here. So I'll choose start, end, and direction. It's going to ask me to specify the start point of the arc. That would be the start point. Specify the end point. That would be the end point. And now which direction? Do I want it to go in or out? It's a really easy way of creating a nice arc. So one more time on that arc. 
Instead of the standard arc, it's the start, end, and direction. I'll go from that point to that point, and I'll choose a direction going out. So now I have the door. Next thing to do would be to draw in the window. So I'm going to use my line tool again. And what a lot of people do is they start at the corner and they say, oh, well, I see that the, uh, the line needs to go over one foot six. So I'll click on the corner and I'll say one foot six inches. And then I'll draw the line down. And this is where perpendicular snap is really good. So I'm going to turn that perpendicular snap back on right here in my object snaps. And when I do that, it'll snap perfectly 90 degrees down to my line, like that. So people tend to do that. Unfortunately, it gives us two lines on top of each other right there. So I have this short little line. So I would have to go back and delete that line to make this drawing clean. The other option here is instead of doing it on, uh, you know, where you just draw from that corner, would be to hover over, I'm not clicking, hover over that point, move over, and as I move over, I should be able to specify the two feet of distance. I think, yeah, it was two feet. And now I'm drawing it right there. So in, if you were in the 136 class, this is smart tracking. It's called smart tracking in Rhino. Um, AutoCAD calls it object tracking. It's just a different way of, of working through it. So in this particular case, let me draw those windows again. I would start with my line tool. I would come to the corner, get that little green box, then move my mouse over, and I get a little bit of a green dotted line showing up. And I type in 1 foot 6 inches, and I draw my line straight down and snap to perpendicular. It didn't create a line on top of my other line right there. It's relative to this point. I moved over by 1 foot 6, and then I started there. Same thing happens. I'll hover over this point. I get that little green square. I move over by a specific value, in this case 2 feet, and I hit Enter and then I'll draw that line down as well. So those two lines then denote my window. I could get a little fancy and I could put a line you know, across the middle to represent the glass or something like that. I'm not overly worried about that at this stage. We'll, we'll enhance your drawings a little bit later on, uh, but I want you to start to be familiar with these concepts. Turn on your perpendicular snap. So in your object snaps, that, that blue box with the green uh, circle in the corner, click the little downward facing arrow and make sure you've turned on perpendicular snap. So right there. If you can't find it, I'll help you oh, later on. Oh, you got it. Perfect. OK, so now I need a, another version of this window over here. In that case, I could take this window like that, and I'm going to select it from left to right so that I'm selecting just the window. If I selected from right to left, I'd get the walls and everything else. So from left to right, I get just the window. And I'm going to come up here and use the mirror tool. And when I click on mirror, it's going to say specify first point of mirror line. Well, I lost the middle of my wall here, but I still have it down here. So I'll, I'll zoom out using the scroll wheel. I'll come down and I'll click at the midpoint of this line on the opposite wall. And I will draw that line straight up and get a second version. Now, at the end of the mirror command, it's going to ask me, do I want to erase source objects? No is set as default, assuming you don't want to erase it. Sometimes when you're, when you're drawing, you want to mirror something and you want the original to go away because you want the mirrored version only. Uh, that's why it asks you. So all I have to do is hit Enter because no is the default. And I get my second line. I need this window down at the bottom. Same thing. Select the window from left to right. Back up to the mirror command. 
And this time I'll use the, the side wall here, the midpoint of the side wall. No, I don't want to erase the source objects. And there it is down at the bottom. Could I redraw this each time? Absolutely. This is just an efficiency sort of thing. So next thing, I need to copy this over so that it's, it's over by, by uh, it's creating that second window. They're six inches apart. So I could use the copy command, which is right here. When I click on copy, it's going to ask me to specify a base point. This is the point that you're copying from. So if, for example, I snap to this point, I need to go this direction by 2 feet 6 inches. Because the window is 2 feet, we add the 6 inches for the space in between. And that creates it. The other option, for those of you that are a little bit more advanced in AutoCAD, when I go to do this copy, instead of copying from that point, I could actually copy from a point that's 6 inches away to the left. So I use that object tracking to move myself by six inches. And then the point that I copied from is six inches away. This would be particularly useful if you were doing a bunch of windows that were all six inches apart, for example. I'll hit Enter when I'm done. That wasn't what I was intending to do. I just was showing you that. I also have a window on the side wall here. So I could draw the window. But for those of you that are feeling comfortable in AutoCAD, I'd like to point out that instead of drawing the window, I could once again use the mirror command to create that window. So I could select these, this window. I could use mirror. But instead of mirroring this way or this way, I'm going to mirror across a 45 degree line, which is from this corner to that corner. So it's a little bit more of an advanced trick to get across the corner. But because they're equidistant from the corner, it's a really easy mirror to do. If I lost you, don't worry about it. You can just draw it from scratch. I just like to throw these things out for those of you that are already pretty comfortable in AutoCAD. Hopefully, you're still learning things. So there are more doors and windows for you to draw. Um, it's going to take you a little bit of time to get through this. So you'll have the remainder of the class time to work through it. I um, Let's see if there's anything else. A couple other things that I'm just going to point out to you that may be useful. If I had two lines in space, like that, and I wanted them to join together, I can do that using what's called a fillet, which will connect them with a little bit of an arc. So I could click on the fillet command here. It's going to say specify or select first object or I can specify a radius. So let's say that was one foot. Now when I click this object and that object, they're going to come together in a nice arc. The trick here is that if you wanted them to come together at a point, you could use the same fillet command with a radius of 0. And you could connect these two at a point instead of through an arc. So that's just a trick. It's not, it's not quite so relevant when you're at 90 degrees. But if I had two objects that were like this, for example, and I wanted those two to come together at a point, that's where I could use the fillet with a radius of 0. And I could say, basically, connect this line to that line in space. Just a useful little side trick for those of you feeling, feeling comfortable. Uh, chamfer works very similar to uh, fillet. I don't even know. It's probably underneath the fillet command. Yeah, there's chamfer. The difference being, instead of a radius, it's an angle. You could do that if you wanted to. Um, rotating an object. Essentially, if I take my object like this, I click on the rotate command here says specify a base point. That's the point around which I want to rotate. So we'll, we could say I want to rotate around that point, for example. And I can rotate around. I could type in a specific degree. So I could type in, oh, I want it to go 30 degrees. And it's going to rotate 30 degrees. 
So that's rotate. Uh, let's see if there's any other things. Yeah, we already did mirror. Yeah, that's probably good. So I'm going to turn you guys loose for the rest of the day. I know it's a lot to take in. One of the things about AutoCAD is it just takes some time and some practice. So start working with it. Next class, we'll build upon what we talked about today. And you'll do a little bit more work, a little bit more guided work, uh, et cetera. Are there any questions? Individual or? OK. So I'll come, I'll come and help you in just a second.